50% of the world's population use online social media and were spending an average of 2 hours every day sharing, liking, tweeting, and updating on these platforms. According to some reports, that breaks down to around half a million tweets and Snapchat photos shared every minute. With social media playing such a big part in our lives, could we be sacrificing our mental health and well-being as well as our time? What does the evidence actually suggest? Facebook responds to mental well-being claims. Is it time to rethink how we use me- social media? He conducted in 2016 involving 100 people found a threefold risk of depression and anxiety among people who use the most social media platforms. Reasons for this, they suggested, include cyberbullying having a disordered view of other people's life and feeling like time spent on social media is wasting. Humans used to spend their evening in darkness but now were surrounded by artificial lighting all day and night. Research has found that this can inhibit the body's production of the hormone melatonin which facilitates sleep and blue light which is emitted by smartphone and laptop screens, is said to be the worst culprit. In other words, if you lie on the pillow and night checking Facebook and Twitter, you're headed for restless slumber. Last year, researchers from the University of Pittsburgh as 18 to 30 years old about their social media and sleeping habits. They found a link with sleep disturbances and concluded blue light had a part to play. How often they lodge on rather than time spent on social media sites was a higher predictor of disturbed sleep suggesting an obsessive checking the researcher said. The researchers say this could be caused by psychological arousal before sleep, and the bright lights of our device can delay circadian rhythm, but they couldn't clarify whether social media causes disturbed sleep, or if those who have disturbed sleep spend more time on social media. Despite the argument from a few researchers that tweeting may be harder to resist than cigarettes and alcohol, social media addiction isn't included in the latest diagnostic manual for mental health disorders. They said social media is changing faster than scientists can keep up with, so various groups are trying to study compulsive behavior related to its use for example. Scientists from the Netherlands have invited their own scale to identify possible addiction, and if social media addiction does ex- exist, it will be a type of internet addiction, and that is a classified disorder. In 2011, Daria Kuss and Margaret Fitz from Nottingham Trent University in the UK have analyzed 43 previous studies on Demeter and conclude that social media addiction is a mental health problem that may require professional treatment. They found that excessive usage was linked to relationship problems, worse academic achievement and less participation in offline communities, and found that those who could be more vulnerable to a social media addiction include those dependent on alcohol. The highly extroverts and those who use social media to compensate for fewer ties in real life. Women's magazines and their use of underage and Photoshop models have been long maligned for stringing self-esteem 
issues among young women. But no social media with its filters and lighting and clever angles is taking over as primary concern among some campaigning groups and clarities. Social media sites makes more than half of user feels inadequate according to a survey of a thousand five hundred people by disability charity scope. And help of 18 to 34 years old say it make them feel unattractive. A 2016 study by researchers at Penn State University suggested viewing other people's self is lower self esteem because users compare themselves to photos of people looking their happiest. Research from the University of Strathclyde, Ohio University, University of Iowa also found that women compare themselves negatively to selfies of other women. But it's not just selfies that have the potential to then self as them. A study of a thousand Swedish Facebook users found that women who spend more time on Facebook reported feeling less happy and confident. The researchers concluded, when Facebook users compare their own life with others, seemingly more successful, careers, and happy relationship, they may feel that their own life are less successful in comparison. Facebook had a positive effect on self-esteem compared to other activities that boost self-awareness, mirrors, and photos. The researchers explained it that make us compare ourselves to social standards. Whereas looking at our own Facebook profiles might boost self esteem because it's easier to control how we are presented to the world. In a study from 2013, researchers texting 79 participants five times a day for 14 days, asking them how they felt and how much they used Facebook since the last text. The more time people spend on the site, the worse they felt later on. And the more their live satisfaction declined over time. But other research has found that for some people, social media can help boost their well-being. Marketing researchers Jonah Berger and Eva found that people who are emotionally unstable are more likely to post about their emotion which can help them receive supports and bounce back ever negative experience. It is clear that in many areas not enough is known yet to draw many strong conclusion. However, the evidence does point one way. Social media affect people differently depending on pre-existing the condition and personality traits as with food, gambling, and many other temptations of the modern age. Excessive use for some individual is probably inadvisable, but at the same time, it will be wrong to say social media is a universally bad thing because clearly it brings myriad benefits to our lives. She's waiting for love to